Hey, welcome to part two of our application. We're using uh, Java Server Faces. So the end result is we're going to be doing a login form that has a response page. And so let's get right back to the uh, coding where we left off from part one. So next, let's check to see if this onSubmit function actually is fired when we click the Submit button. So let's go and do something inside of the form controller. So right now it just returns null. Let's do a system dot out and print line and let's print something to our screen here. So print line, there we go. And uh, let's just send a test message. Uh, you clicked the submit button. That should be enough to tell us if it's actually working. We'll see down here in the console log the uh, actual printed message. So let's run this again and let's see if it does print exactly as we've told it to. All right, so I've got the login form now and we're going to just click the submit button and watch here at the bottom of the screen. And right here it does say you click the submit button. So now the goal is to capture the user first name and user last name values inside of the form controller and let's see if we can print those out. Before we get into the next part, I need to show you something from the documentation at the Oracle website. We're talking about a class called Faces Context. And uh, Faces Context is an object and it contains all of the per request state information related to the processing of a single Java server faces request. So in other words, the information from a submit button. And there's an object that contains all kinds of data. Look at all these methods. We're going to be using this one here called get application, returns the instance associated with this application. So let's look at the get application object here or the property and it will give us an object of the current application. Let's see what that is. And an application has all kinds of properties and methods. So just to let you know ahead of time we're going to be using something called evaluate expression which is also in here. Here it is. Evaluate expression get. So I just wanted to let you know that we're going to be using these documents right here in the next phase of our application. So the process of capturing user first name and last name and putting it into the form controller is not obvious. So we're going to do some typing here and you're going to just have to kind of memorize how this works. The, uh, the first thing we need to do is get what's called the context. So faces context is the, um, is the name of an object that we're going to create. And let's call this thing context. And it says here that you do not know what faces context is. You have to import something. So from faces.context faces, we've got ourselves the first variable here. And now we want to get faces context on this object here, dot, and we want to do get current context. So this basically tells the computer that we're capturing the, uh, the value of this app, the ID number of an app. Now, we're going to create a user object. So let's type in user. So user, user is going to equal something. Also, it's going to say, uh, don't know where users are from. Let's go and import it from the beans area. So this object here is now imported from here. So we're going to assign this user object to something from the context. So context dot and then we're going to choose get application and then we're going to have another dot and evaluate expression of from the uh, context area so we want the first one here which says evaluate expression get so in other words what get value are we are we trying to capture so first of all it says what's the context we'll leave that alone and then the expression that we're looking for so the expression is our user item and then it says expected type so this object that's coming in is a what is it a is it an integer is it a string well the answer is it's a user object so let's type in 
user dot class. So it tells it it's going to be a, a user object. So that means we have now captured the user object that comes from the form. So we should be able to not only say you clicked the button, we should be able to print out some values from that object. So let's do this. Um, let's say the first name is, and then let's put in the uh, user dot, and let's do get first name, and let's do the same for the last name. Now you notice we got an issue here, T. Okay, so this should be able to print the first and last name. Let's try and see if it works. And there it is. We have the, you click the submit button. The first name is Shad. The last name is Sluder. So you can tell that the form is actually submitting properly. Let's see if we have something else here. Let's call Shad Smith. And sure enough, it catches it as Smith. So the form is actually transferring data to the form controller. Now the point of a form controller isn't just to print things on the console. We need to actually send the information to another page and then display the data. So let's first of all create a page where we're going to display the data. So that means we're going to need a new web content page. So let's go to new and choose the uh, XHTML. And let's call this thing uh, response and XHTML. Once more, we don't really need to have most of the code on here. So let's uh, eliminate the styles and then all the content from the body. So let's start about there. So let's put in some messages and we'll just call this as a good title as response page and maybe then we'll put in a paragraph and we'll say hello and now once again I'm going to print out the actual user and first name and let's say I hope you're doing well let's put in another one that talks about their last name Okay, so now this is a pretty simple message. It should just reply that we have um, ourselves a you know, first and last name. Now, one problem in the controller, we haven't actually told the uh, program that we're going to display that page. So when you have a return statement in a controller, you just need to return the value or the string of the of the of the next page. So we want the actual name of this file, response.xhtml, and put that in here where it says null. So let's see, response.xhtml. And one other thing we need to do is we need to insert the the user value back into the uh, the get request. So let's go through this faces context thing again. Let's choose. Let's choose the statement get current context and a period. And then we wanted to choose something called get external context. And then we're going to say get request. And uh, the map is what we're looking for. So in other words, we're intercepting the you know, the, the, like a form is a get variable. And we're going to insert into the get variable, or I guess it's probably a post variable in this thing, and we're going to insert uh, an item called user. And the object that we're going to send is the user object. So that's how it works. This will um, put back into the uh, request a user object. So I'm going to put in some comments here so we know what this is all about. Okay, so I've got ourselves some comments. The first section is put there to get the user values from the input form. 
this is for testing purposes. We want to blog out the uh, results there to our console. And then finally put the user back into the post request. And now we're going to show the next page. So returning that page value or the file name will put it onto the web browser. So now I should be able to save my work and let's try the login form. We should get a response page this time. And there it is, response page. Hello, Shad, I hope you're doing well. I believe your last name is Sluter. Let's back up and try something else. So we put in Donald Trump and it looks like we got the right thing. So that pretty much wraps it up. We've got ourselves an example of using JSF. So the key idea of JSF is that we're able to embed the properties of an object directly into a form. And that only works is if you were to assign this managed being decorator in front of the, uh, the, the name of the class. And so Java Enterprise is developed so that you can automatically link these two together. All right, so that pretty much uh, brings us to the end of the tutorial part. What I'd like you to do to extend this is uh, in the login form, we've got our first and last name. Why don't you decorate this with some CSS so it looks a little bit prettier and you can pr probably use this as your first uh, point in the milestone on our assignment uh, where you build your own app.